Welcome to this session. My wife and I have been reading some of the material on a fascinating website. It's an introduction to the German New Medicine, the work of Dr. Hammer, H-A-M-E-R. The link to it is in the description for this picture. Uh, this is work that's been going on since the 80s. Dr. Hammer is a clinical oncologist and has a record of curing perhaps more than 90% of the cancer sufferers who come to him. One shouldn't really ignore this kind of track record. His understanding and his ability to diagnose, and it's, his ability to diagnose is kind of amazing, is based on his experience that a computerized tomographic scan of the brain will show circles at some location and the location will define which uh, organ is involved and will give you a very strong hint about what caused the situation. Often this involves cancer or some other kind of abnormal uh, behavior of an organ. And I'm finding a direct connection between the ideas that I see in this and the certain things about my symbols that have been puzzling me for a while. Let me talk a little bit about what in the symbols has left me puzzled. When I first started using them, I simply did line drawings, like a triangle would simply be a line connected together and this whole thing would be supposed would be an equilateral triangle. Or it might be embedded in a circle going around it. Something like that. Or it might be two triangles in the shape of a Jewish star. Something nice and symmetrical like that. I created a book of these things as I made them for myself. And my wife started to use them and that he helped her. And now we have some friends who have used this book and have benefited from it a lot. By my current standards, these drawings are, are not precise enough. For example, suppose we had that triangle embedded in a circle. The way I first did it, the edge of the triangle might not quite touch the circle on this side, and on that side it might go beyond it just a little bit. And now, when I need a symbol, I want one in which that kind of thing is perfect. In fact, my present experience is that the, the outline itself is a source of a problem. For example, how wide is that triangle? Do I count the width of the line on both sides? Do I, or not? Halfway? The line in itself ends up interfering so much I cannot get good results from these things. So in the end I have simply colored the whole triangle full, make it red, and completely erase the boundary for it. That has allowed me to move on. Well then, why did I get such wonderful results from the original symbols, which were not precise, they used the outline, they were not colored at all, and they were amazing. Is there something I'm missing? Dr. Hammer's work shows that the parts of the brain that are associated with the problem, cancer, disease, whatever, 
might be the cortex, this large part that is so characteristic of us humans. The cerebellum, which is a smaller, much older version that you would find in, oh, a dog or a monkey, something like that. Or the old brain itself or the spinal column, the really ancient stuff that you see in an, an alligator or a snake or a lizard. Animals like this have essentially not, no part of the head, just stops right here above the eyes. There's no reason for all of this that we humans take for granted. And I'm finding myself wondering if the symbols I'm using now are those that I need for the cortex, very detailed, very precise emotions that are very complex and very symmetrical. And that the ones I used originally, I'm pointing toward the book on my shelf over there, were for the cerebellum the older version, the simpler version of the brain, which perhaps is not so picky about how the symmetries are working out. This leads to another issue which is very interesting and that is are there symbols for the old brain and the spinal column? And we begin to look at that and I created some that have helped us. For example, In some ways, you could look at, oh, say, a, look at diabetes. Take that for example. Sugar metabolism is pretty fundamental in a human being. It's regulated at a very fundamental level. I mean, look at a moth. If the moth cannot regulate its sugar, it can't get, it, it can't make its muscles work. This is very, very primitive. So. Here we're dealing with an issue that really is at the most fundamental level. And perhaps one way to cure diabetes would be simply to find the geometry in the human being that has become faulty and correct it. So the human being says, no, I am not willing to accept diabetes. It is simply wrong. This geometry has to be right. My sugar needs to be handled properly. That's fine. The symbols for the old brain are really interesting. They're simple. Maybe only three or four items in it, like some circles. And they're not particularly symmetrical. They might be next to each other or side by side. There's a symbol that involves hexagons. There's three of them. And they are just touching on the sides. They're, it's not a particularly symmetrical pattern. They're basically rather simple patterns. And that kind of, intuitively, that seems to ring true. And I'm now beginning to wonder if some of the problems I've had healing things in myself is that I tried to heal it up here when in fact the basic problem was back here. I don't know where this is going to take me but it is very interesting and I do think that the website of Dr. Hummers is really fascinating. Talk to you again. Bye now.